So let's begin today's seminar titled Working Solutions, Lessons from Local Communities on Integration Strategies. We will begin today's session with greetings and introductory remarks from Ulrich Kohlberg, Kober, Head of Bertelsmann Democracy and Integration Program, followed by remarks from the distinguished Professor Dr. Rita Sussman, former president of the German Bundestag, renowned for her leadership and passionate contribution to the migration field and a true thinker in this field in Europe and beyond. Crystal Morehouse will then provide a short outline of Bertelsmann's recent work with the Transatlantic Council on Migration on the theme of learning from around the world, followed by Claudia Walter, who is a program manager with Bertelsmann Integration and Local Communities Program, who will lead the main presentation and describe the participatory workshop approach Bertelsmann has developed for helping local communities structure inclusive integration policy and program with local relevance. So let me welcome my good friend and partner, Ulrich Kober. Uli is also the program manager, by the way, for the prestigious 2008 Carl Bertelsmann Prize. Hello, Uli, and welcome. We are delighted to have you today here with us today. And I know that we've been working on this project together for roughly a year and a bit, and I still have very fond memories of where the partnership started, which was in a beautiful beer garden in Berlin with a glass of beer. Uh, a good glass of beer will always help relationships along. I, I say that possibly because I spent a great number of my formative years in Germany, but I'm sure there's more to that. It's always good ideas that bring partners together. Uh, so what are we doing today? Don't let me hold you back, and welcome Uli. Thank you very much, Ratna, for this very nice introduction. Um, though I'm a German, I'm not a beer drinker, but anyway, I think we, I, I had a glass of water when we met uh, last year. And thanks again for this wonderful partnership. As you mentioned, my name is Ulrich Kober, and I'm in charge of the integration activities of the Bertelsmann Foundation. The Bertelsmann Foundation is one of the biggest foundations in Germany. It is an operative foundation and not a grant-making institution. So we set up projects of our own, and uh, we have been, in fact, active in promoting integration in Germany since the foundation's beginnings in 1977. What have we done so far? Our main instruments in our work are research, benchmarking, networking, and consulting. And we are particularly aiming at identifying best practice nationally and internationally. And therefore, we were so happy and uh, are very proud to be part of this international network, Cities of Migration. And we recently uh, focused our activities in the field of integration on two key issues, which we identified as very important uh, to bring about integration, and these are um, the fields of participation and education, they are indeed keys to integration. And my colleagues Crystal Morehouse and Claudia Walter will tell you about it later on. Now I have the privilege to introduce to you Professor Süßmuth. Ratna already mentioned her. She has indeed been one of the most influential personalities in German politics for decades. She served as a minister and president of, of the German parliament. And what is uh, very important for our issue today, she headed the National Commission of Migration set up by the then government, and this commission brought up recommendations to modernize integration and migration policies in Germany, and they were very successful, and they really helped to design new integration policies in Germany at the beginning of the new millennium. And Rita Süßmuth was also a member of the UN Global Commission on Migration set up by Kofi Annan. And for us here in the Bertelsmann Foundation, Professor Rita Wiesmuth is a key partner to improve integration in Germany. And she will be going to speak about challenges of integration in Germany. When we are reflecting where we are now, and important for me, send this message. Don't believe that we solve our problems within this economic and financial crisis by closing the door or by sending back migrants. Migrants are more to include for solutions. For a long time we saw them like a problem. 
But the most important thing is to see them as part of solution because that's the world in which we are living now and we have to solve the problems together. We are speaking about diversity, so what do we need? Fact of emotions, of strategies, and how to learn to live together peacefully. For that, we have still a lot, a lot to learn. We are in Germany in a new start, in the beginning, but we are learning. And so the main challenge is not to be separated, developing a feeling of belonging together, and not to focus too much on ethnicity, but to focus much more we all are human beings from different cultures, with different life experiences, with different pressure, different priorities. Very often these challenged refugees are regarded as very weak persons. In reality, they are very strong, having experienced a lot of resistance, a lot of pain. The next question is, what kind of legal framework do we need dealing with this human right, basic human right? There's a discussion in my country now, yes, there should be a right to go to school without being registered when your parents have irregular states. There are other challenges, and that's the biggest one, to invest in, a, in education, in participation in work, in citizenship, that we turn from deficit potential, that we turn from promoting them, integrate on the basis of participation, developing their capacities, their potentials, giving them the feeling we need one another. Of course, we need in a society where we live together common norms, rules, we are all following. At the same time, we are different as individuals, as members of different cultures. But we can solve problems together. If it is demographic problems, climate problems, social problems, there is a new, really, a solidarity which we are living and not only putting on our papers and in our proclamations. And then the other question, how do we reach people? Really dealing with the problems we have. Because you can't live plurality, diversity, without conflict. We have to learn how to deal with it, how to speak to another with respect, but also with conviction. I was very interested to listen yesterday to Obama not war of civilization. We are pursuing peace. That's a message for Christians, for Buddhists, for Muslims. So it's not only to give them a house, education, participation at work, but to develop culture of diversity and regarding one another as human beings with all our weaknesses, but with all our strengths too. Could you say maybe one or two words about government uh, integration issues? Is there a prospect of moving this process forward in Germany? Yes, you know, we have this big economic and financial crisis. We have to decide priorities. We are saving banks. We have to balance investment in human beings from the early childhood to all the life, adult education. There is a challenge. We have now a national integration plan but which are the issues? It's a question of how do we measure? What do we know about progress? So the uh, big task will be how to, the kind of monitoring and really to promote such activities that this one third of migrants being excluded from our society, living on social aid, can get more and more a productive member human society profession. And then uh, there is a third challenge for the next government. How to deal with poverty migrants, migrants forced to leave their country out of poverty, so-called climate migration, because climate change has a big impact in the future. We realize that we are a country of immigration, but we have to organize an open door for such groups which we can send back. Be aware that there is less citizenship compared to the year 2000 when we introduced the new law. So there are big challenges and above all we can't stop migration 
and we can't simply send them back. That is not the discussion now, but in my country we are focusing first of all on integrate, but we have to find solutions for very well done migration, which are the criteria, and for integration, but only focusing on integration. Thank you. Thank you for um, those words. I realized that we were having trouble um, uh, getting the soundtrack uh, to function as, as well as it should. Um, we apologize for that. Uh, the rem Dr. Seussman's remarks will be posted online so we can get back to them. Uh, I think I, I want to particularly note uh, a, um, a few points that Dr. Seussman made that are particularly um, uh, important today as we woke up this morning in Canada uh, to the news of the of the shift to of, of political thinking in the EU elections um, and, and as uh, regional associations like the EU are are beset by uh, changes in public opinion on the one hand Dr. Seussmoot very appropriately points out that there are some global forces that cannot be stopped, and one of these global forces is migration. So the challenge is, what do you do about this? And, and Dr. Seussmoot's vision or, and theme of common ground grounded in neighborliness for one another, I think increasingly informs the integration debate at the local level. I believe uh, today this is a very refreshing contribution to this conversation uh, that can uh, sometimes get lost in the rhetoric of the immigration debate, particularly in Europe. So here is the first of our poll questions. This is our chance to capture public opinion uh, and talk to each other in the virtual room. The question is, what actors influence migration and integration policy the most, Politi po and you have the list of uh, the, the suggested answers. You have two minutes to submit your response, and then we will be able to report the results to you instantly. I am going to uh, cast my vote now. Um, uh, this is, um, so, so have a number of you. Right now, 40 48 percent of you, 46 percent of you have voted for politicians and administration. I think some votes are still coming in, uh, but clearly in your mind, politicians and administration is, are, are the actors that influence migration and integration policy the most, followed by all actors, which is that all players around the table have a contribution to make, followed by actors of civil society. So those are our results. 50, mm -hmm. We're going to post the results now, I think. You have your last moment to um, submit. OK. I was ahead of myself. Uh, do we have the results now? Yes. We yes. have the results now. 52% voted for politicians and administration. 29% voted for all actors. Uh, 19% voted for actors of civil society, and interestingly enough, nobody, 0%, voted for migrants. Let's thank you, Evelyn, uh, for managing this for us. Let's turn now to Crystal Morehouse, Program Manager in Bertelsmann's Democracy and Integration Program with responsibility for the Bertelsmann role in the Transatlantic Council for Migration. Hi, thank you very much. This is my first webinar, so I'm quite excited to join you today. I'm going to tell you about one of our projects called the Transatlantic Council on Migration. And it's a project that we do together with the Migration Policy Institute in Washington, D.C. And we're also working um, with several other foundations and governments on the project. So it's actually a, a, a bigger cooperation with seven contributing foundations and two governments on board. What the Transatlantic Council is, is an ideas factory. The idea was initiated 
in 2008. It actually is an, is an outgrow of a, of a former project we had that was called the Transatlantic Task Force. But since January 2008, we have the Transatlantic Council on Migration with nine members from eight countries. And you can see which members those are on your screen. The goal of the Transatlantic Council is to bring research together with um, policy and to to really use the, the political acumen of our members um, to, to translate that into policy reform initiatives and to contribute to national dialogues on migration and integration reform in the countries that our members come from. So um, this has been now uh, an initiative that has addressed several issues. Um, we have had meetings, our inaugural meeting was in April 2008. Um, the council meets twice a year for regular sessions, and it also convenes for extraordinary meetings at the request of governments. So in May, sorry, in April 2008 of last year, we had our inaugural meeting in Bellagio, Italy, at the Rockefeller, Rockefeller Center, and that meeting addressed two main issues. The first one was migration and development, and the second one was citizenship. Um, citizenship became really the core of that meeting, of that first meeting. And from that meeting, we produced um, a book called Delivering Citizenship, which you can also see on your screen, that contains the policy recommendations and the analysis from that meeting. Um, then the second meeting that we had with the council was in November of 2008. And there um, we address the issue of economic competitiveness. And just at that time, the global recession was becoming apparent. It was uh, people were <laughs> starting to use the word recession. And what we looked at was how economic competitiveness, migration, and, and really the, the recession um, now fit together and how these events of, of the, that are taking place today are going to affect the future of migration uh, policy really around the world. We looked not only at um, receiving countries, but we, we looked at each continent um, to see how demographic development, not just how populations develop, but also how um, levels of education are developing around the, the world, how uh, fertility rates are changing around the world, and how that might change future flows of migration. And how there may be certain matches or mismatches um, between different regions of the world as far as their need for talent, their need for um, labor goes, and um, the, the demand, uh, and how, that, how the supply will change. Um, and so what came out of that meeting is a series of recommendations, policy recommendations, not just for the immediate future, but also looking on uh, 10, 15 years from now, how for example, selection mechanisms for, for economic migration have to be developed and changed in order to, to keep, attract, keep and attract talent, um, and that not just, not just in the industrial world, but um, in other regions around the world as well. What I want to focus on today is our meeting that we had last month in May. Um, it was on public opinion, the media, and migration. And um, what we looked at, we focused on three countries at that meeting. Uh, we focused on the United Kingdom, the U.S., and Germany. And um, we brought together politicians, pollsters, and journalists in order to assess, really, um, what the narrative, what the migration narrative is in the press and how the, pop the majority of populations are feeling about migration and integration in those countries, especially now with the economic recession being a game changer in the, in the migration reform debate. So um, the, that meeting aimed to deliver strategies uh, for these countries on how to advance an enlightened public debate about migration reform. As you know, in the US, there's been a stalled debate on migration reform. Uh, and there, the analysis that, we, that was brought to the table at our Italy meeting was that um, that the media has taken a position, or before the change of administration, there had been sort of an entrenched position of the media 
opposing um, pro government proposals for uh, reform and that this position was also uh, influencing the way the public viewed migration. So you have this interplay between public opinion and the media. And in the U.S., uh, immigration was highly focused on uh, irregular immigration. So people's opinion and associations when it came to immigration um, were were just hitting one specific point of the immigration debate, and that was illegal immigration. And uh, in the U.K., there it was uh, quite interesting to see how public opinion there had developed because of you probably know that the United Kingdom has experienced a significant rise in immigration uh, in the last five years in particular, uh, and also from mostly from Eastern Europe. So although in the UK 78% um, of people think immigration was a problem nationally, polls show that only 18% think that it's a problem locally. So there was this extrapolation, not just of personal experience, but people were drawing on the media to sort of fill in the bigger picture of what's going on in the UK concerning uh, immigration. And uh, that was that was ma making public opinion, or it was, let's say, influencing. I mean, can't say it was completely causal. It was influencing public opinion uh, more to, to the negative side. So the situation that we saw in Germany is that um, the media has, is much like a, a mirror of the political debate. So you don't have a, a, a media taking a strong position pro or contra migration or pro or contra migration reform, but largely being an actor that is just um, a neutral actor that is, that is just bringing that debate out um, into the broader public, and, uh, but, but not taking a clear position on the issue. And um, in Germany, you don't have strong anti-immigrant uh, sentiments, but you do have strong sentiments, for example, um, against dual citizenship or other integration issues that um, are also now subject to, to reform or will soon be subject to debate and reform in Germany. So looking at those issues in the specific countries, we drew some broader conclusions. Um, and I would just like to touch on two of those uh, right now. The first broader conclusion was that words really do matter in the immigration debate. So we had uh, two very good pollsters present to us about the types of associations people have in, in large surveys that they've done. When you say the word immigration, what's the first word that jumps into a person's mind? And some of the associations were extremely were positive. This was for the American context. Um, for example, people answered opportunity, uh, a better life, American dream, but also there were some very negative associations that people uh, um, recalled when, when asked, which were crime or illegality. So when, when politicians or, or civil society or really anybody is discussing migration issues in the public, it's important to be aware of what associations the words that you use are bringing up uh, in the minds of your audience. And one of the one of the takeaways from the meeting was that the words you choose tell your tell the public a lot about you you as a speaker or you as an institution um, as much as they they carry the message that you want to say. So if you use um, vocabulary activist vocabulary, um, then it can that could actually trigger some of your audience to, to to turn off to your message if they don't feel that they're part of that camp. So. Using um, really neutral words to explain your vision or your idea um, of how the narrative, the migration narrative, is moving in your country it is very important, and to choose those words very carefully in order not to lose a lot of your target audience right from the beginning. Um, the second takeaway from our meeting was that um, that the immigration or that people people are very emotional when it comes to the issue of migration. Um, so sometimes the debates about migration or migration reform will center around trying to win the argument, trying to win the, the, the war of statistics, uh, I would say, to, to have the better um, calculation of how much something costs or doesn't cost or if um, something is a net tax gain or a, a net tax loss or this kind of thing. And actually, 
um, the, the uh, surveyed, or, or the sorry, the opinion, the pollsters um, came up, found out that opinion is more influenced by the emotional connection. So if you can, if you can connect your argument to the values of your society, um, then you're more likely to win the debate than if you try to win the numbers game. Um, those are just two points um, from a three-day meeting that we had, and um, I'm happy to share more of our results with you and more of the data on where public opinion stands in these three countries and how the um, narrative is in the media if you're interested to find out more. And I can also send you more information on our council if you'd like to find out more about that. But um, I want to stay within our time, so I'm going to stop here. And thank you very much. Thank you, Crystal, for that really interesting overview of the Council's activities. I know that the Council, uh, that Bertelsmann, in fact, is hosting a Council meeting next week in Berlin, and I look forward to being a fly on the wall there. Uh, we also hope to post a summary of those discussions in our post-event blog, um, and we will send you all the link. There are questions uh, coming over uh, the, the computer lines as to how they can access more information about this uh, transplanting council. So while Claudia sets up, let's take a look at our next poll question. At our next poll question. And the question is, which level of governance, governance can best address the challenges of integration? Um, and there are a number of options. I ask you all to cast your vote. I certainly know what I think. Claudia and I will be very interested in your responses. I want to give you one more minute uh, to cast your vote. Remember, this is optional. It's lots of fun. It is also 100% confidential. OK, I think we have some results here. Uh, it's 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 not as 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 definitive as our last poll. Uh, Thirty-eight percent of you think that the local level, yay, for the local level, uh, can best address the challenges of integration. Closely followed by all levels, um, twenty-one percent, only twenty-one percent think that the national level has um, has uh, a role to play in local integration. And interestingly enough, again, the global and international level uh, seems to have excited us the least on this question. Thank you again, Evelyn. Uh, let's go on to the main presentation of our good idea of, uh, for this webinar today. And I hand this over with great delight to Claudia uh, Walters of the Bertelsmann Foundation. Claudia is the program manager for the Integration and Local Communities Program and is a working partner and a contributor to the Cities of Migration Initiative. Welcome, Claudia. Hi. Thank you very much, Radna. Nice to speak to you. And hello, everybody. Yes, it was really interesting to, um, to see the um, last poll um, that many of you um, mark the local level or O level. So um, this fits very good to what I uh, am going to introduce now. It's about uh, the presentation. It's about our integration workshops for cities and municipalities. So it's about the local uh, level. So <clears throat> in the last years, the debate in Germany came to the insight that integration cannot be an isolated matter of the foreigners' authority, but has to be a cross-functional and multi-departmental task. Also, it became more and more clear how important it is to develop strategies and activities together with migrants, not for migrants. One recommendation to cities has been to develop a concept on integration politics with an analysis, analysis with goals, objectives, and activities, instead of having just single actual activities without any sustainabilities. 
in, in order to support cities and municipalities, we, <clears throat> in order to support cities and municipalities, we did, developed in cooperation with three experienced trainers a kind of training called integration workshop. You see that here on the screen. This workshop takes place for participants coming from one single city or community. So starting the process, um, well, we address city administration with the following questions. Um, those, A, those cities who are at the big, very beginning and who want to start the process, we ask, how can you start to develop an integration strategy? How can living together be improved? How can potentials of migrants and opportunities of integration become visible? And how can you build up sustainable structures of dialogue? So the others, uh, the other cities um, who are already um, having an integration concept and who want to further develop uh, it, we ask, how can you evaluate and further develop your integration concept? Uh, what stakeholders are not yet involved but should be in the future? What is already available and what should be further developed? And how can the structures of dialogue be further uh, developed? So starting point of the integration workshops were 10 recommendations, which are an outcome of the integration award that um, the Bertelsmann Foundation and the German Ministry for Interior were running in 2005. The following charts show the 10 recommendations for cities and uh, communities. For example, um, establishing political commitment, um, recommendation number three, or uh, securing participation and activating citizen commitment, the recommendation number four, um, or communities as employers, um, wait, next chart, sorry, communities as employers, this is the recommendation number eight, uh, pressing ahead with the administration's diversity management. What are the goals of our integration workshops? Uh, well, first of all, we want to support cities and communities who develop or further develop an integration concept. And then we want to disseminate successfully, successful approaches, strategies, and good practices, and to build structures of dialogue. We want to implement the paradigm that successful integration policy has to be assured at all levels of society. The target groups, we insist of having participants from the following groups taking part in, part in the workshops. Politicians on local level with the power pool positions. Uh, second, cities administrators of different sectors and migrants and migrant groups who play an active role on local level. So 30% at least should be migrants. Uh, about the context, concept, regarding the concept of the integration workshops, at the beginning we had a concept and schedule for two days. We did one pilot seminar in the city of Felbert. This is uh, close to Essen in Germany. And um, really took several learnings out of this. One learning was integration is not a topic like others. It is much more emotional. Therefore, it seems to be not enough to talk about strategies, etc. But you also need to have some intercultural exchange of the different views. For example, do the participants think the climate of integration in their city is positive or not? Usually, this question and as well others are different answered by migrants or by cities' administration. Another learning was we need to make some effort in order to make the leaders of politics and administration become more involved and to commit themselves. Therefore, we added a three 
for three to four hours preparation workshop for them. You see that on the, at the chart, um, the, the meeting of decision makers first, and then the seminar, and afterwards another meeting um, of the decision makers. The two days workshop takes place one month after this first preparation t meeting and uh, is tackling the following um, questions. The first day from analysis to strategic approach, uh, the questions of this day are uh, what are the different views and perspectives of the participants? What structures of dialogue are already established? What are the most important fields of action? What are we proud of? What needs to be changed? What goals and objectives need to be developed in each field of action? The second day, integration as strategic competition factor. The questions of this day are, what potentials do migrants have? How can we plan integration politics in a strategic way? What goals, objectives, measures, and activities should be developed? For the strategic management, we, by the way, use the following cycle as background, uh, what you see at the chart, starting first with aims and vision, and second with analysis by data and measures, and third, uh, goals, objectives, and activities, and fourth, uh, evaluation. After we implemented these learnings in our concept, the second pilot workshop in Aschaffenburg in, in Bavaria <laughs> was very successful, so we afterwards announced our integration workshop in Germany. Fortunately, we were able to cooperate with the Federal Minister for Integration in North Rhine-Westphalia, Mr. Laschet, so that cities in North Rhine-Westphalia get financial support of 80% by the ministry. We have the following short film just to give you some um, short impressions. Also ich denke, integriert ist der, der in dieser Gesellschaft angekommen ist, der die Bildungschancen dieser Gesellschaft nutzt und der seine Stellung in der Gesellschaft findet kann, sei es in der Wirtschaft, sei es in der Verwaltung, sei es in der Politik, wo auch immer. Immer mehr Kommunen erkennen die Integration von Zuwanderern als zentrale Herausforderung der Zukunft. Ein Konzept muss hier. Wie kann der Prozess zielgerichtet gestaltet werden? Integration, eine Querschnittsaufgabe, bei der Zuwanderer, Politik und Verwaltung in einem Boot sitzen müssen. Sie können sich vorstellen, dass die Intention eines Ehrenamtlers eine ganz andere ist wie eine Stadtverwaltung, eines Politikers und so weiter. Insofern ähm, müssen wir einen Konsens finden und ich hoffe, dass das heute gelingt. Die Integrationsworkshops der Bertelsmann Stiftung setzen genau da an. Wie ist die Situation in den Kommunen? Welche Ziele und Perspektiven gibt es? Der erste Schritt ist immer, es muss sich im Kopf der Menschen etwas verändern. Da braucht man Handlungsfelder und man muss konkrete Maßnahmen entwickeln. Wichtig beim Integrationsprozess ist es, kein Strohfeuer, sondern nachhaltig arbeiten. Und auch diesen Prozess immer zu evaluieren. Das heißt zu überprüfen, wo stehen wir jetzt? Was konnten wir realisieren? Was konnten wir now, um, the speaker of deputy nicht realisieren? Das wird später um, wirklich operativ zu stehen. Da denke ich, da wird uh, gerade uh, gute uh, Vorarbeit uh, hier geleistet. Nach dem Workshop die kritische Stein, Frage, City wie ist die Bilanz? Ja, zum einen 126 äh, konkrete Maßnahmen, die in das jetzt vom Rat zu beschließende Integrationskonzept einfließen sollen. Das ist eine Menge und das ist bei näherer Betrachtung auch wirklich sehr detailliert und viele Dinge, die man auch sehr zügig umsetzen kann, die auch zum Großteil gar nicht zusätzliches Geld kosten. Zum anderen Gelegenheit zum Austausch. Also diese Workshops bieten halt all den Akteuren vor Ort, die es dann am Ende machen müssen, die Gelegenheit, praktische Erfahrungen auch anderer Kommunen zu hören, der Begleitung der Bertelsmann Stiftung, auch die ganze Expertise einer so großen Stiftung für sich zu nutzen und es dann zu übersetzen auf die jeweils lokale Situation. Und es ist für die Städte immer wichtig, über den eigenen Tellerrand hinaus. Wir haben jetzt ein Konzept, das ohne die Moderation der Spannungsbahn nicht zu so erfolgreich gewesen ist.
for your attention. So, okay, now I have a last, um, very last slide uh, with links if you want to have more information. And we also did the workshop in Kerpen. Um, Kerpen is a small city in southwest Germany near Cologne with a population of 64,500 inhabitants. Uh, this was 2008. Uh, more than 20% of them have a migration background and more than 10% of the inhabitants have a foreign nationality which is above the national average. And at the end of the 1950s, the first working migrants arriving from Italy, Spain, Yugoslavia, Greece, Turkey, and Portugal, later on also from Tunisia, Morocco, and South Korea. So now we, uh, we will have a very short interview with Annette Salche, uh, who is responsible for the integration politics in Kerpen, and um, translated um, by Marion. Uh, from the city of Kerpen. So, do you hear me, Marion? Um, no? uh, can you hear me? Yes, hello, Marion. Hello. Hi. Um, so, I, I would like to ask you um, uh, about the integration workshop in Kerpen. Well, Kerpen was doing an integration workshop. What did you get out of it? Well, um, generally, it has brought all people and institutions working on it closer together. Um, for example, these people and institutions were several people with migrational backgrounds, immigrants organized in communities like mosque associations, political spokespersons of the commune and institutions such as charities, integration, integration agencies, and um, educational institutions. Um, because they all became informed about the actual state of affairs, um, they could um, develop a concept of integration together, um, its structures, aims, measures. Um, they all became aware of um, the components and dimensions of integration um, and with an exchange about best practices of uh, other communes in Germany and other countries. Um, well, throughout um, the workshop, um, the participants got uh, the chance to develop empathy with other um, groups of participants. Um, this created a great uh, feeling of community and uh, this helped to find out what CAPM in particular needs uh, in order to improve its integration concept um, we could um, uh, weigh up um, advantages and risks. Um, the participants have brainstormed new ideas together. Um, it was a very positive uh, aspect um, because the participants learned uh, to value each other during uh, the group work on a friendly and open level. Um, and uh, people have been found who are ready to take care of certain aspects of the integration concept, um, such as public uh, relation. Um, yes, um, on uh, the uh, 31st of December in 2008, um, three months uh, after the main part of the workshop took place, um, work on the concept of integration uh, has been finished. Um, yeah, and generally, the workshop has created an awareness uh, for a situation in Kerpen uh, for the participants um, an atmosphere of community. Um, it has advanced um, the communal integration concept. Um, it has smooth, uh, smoothed uh, the way for further political activities concerning integration in Kerpen. It has helped uh, to clear up prejudices. Um, it has helped spread information. Um, it has conveyed an extremely constructive atmosphere of uh, work and conversation. And it has increased the um, willingness of political agents to provide financial means uh, concerning integration. Okay, thank you very much. And then another question, um, did you face any difficulties? And um, if yes, what did you do to overcome them uh, or to, to succeed? Um, actually, um, there haven't been difficulties. Um, the workshop turned out to be an entirely positive experience for everyone. Um, as I said before, it created a great feeling of community. Um, well, the small problems uh, that, you, that we had were just a common problems of administration, but generally um, the workshop uh, was um, taken a very, very positive. Please. Great. Good to hear. Thank you very much, Marion and uh, Annette Seiche from, from Kerpen, just um, telling us a very concrete experience with the integration workshop in Kerpen. Thank you. Thank you.
So, thank you, Claudia. Herzlichen Dank, Annette, Marion. We have very little time, and I do want to get to a few questions. Um, but I'm, I'm going to take the prerogative and ask Claudia a question. I noticed that you rolled out your initiative in two cities that are primarily smaller cities like Kerpen and Aschaffenburg. Was that a strategic decision on the part of Bertelsmann not to go to the big cities of migration in Germany? Well, um, um, as I said, we had this award four years ago, and we noticed that the big cities um, were the first ones developing an integration concept. So what we thought, we, we noticed more and more cities are interested to um, develop an integration concept as well. Um, so we saw the need um, more at the, the middle level <laughs> of um, cities. So let's say really on one hand have, um, don't have so much experience because um, um, they, they notice later that there are so many migrants in the cities, and on the other hand, uh, they have more interest to, um, to, to use the workshops. Thank you, and possibly in a smaller jurisdiction, it's easier uh, to make some progress. Uh, we have a couple of questions. I'm going to read one from John Riley. Hello, John, from the city of Edmonton, who asks a question about our poll. I think this question should be answered either by Claudia or by Crystal, um, and it says, in Canada and the province of Alberta, it seems corporate business interests have a major influence on immigration policy. The poll you had earlier didn't mention corporate interests as potential influencers. Do you think that these interests, corporate and business, are as strong in Europe and other parts of the world? What do you think this might, what, what impact do you think these interests might be having on public opinion in Europe? So I, I, who would like to answer this question? The role of the corporate interest in public opinion is, uh, Claudia, would you like to take that up? Or I is Crystal? Pass over to Crystal. Okay, wonderful. Hi, yeah, that's a good point. I think that should have been one of the choices in the poll. Um, corporate interests do influence immigration policy here, but if we take, for example, the example of Germany uh, that doesn't have a, a very structured system for recruiting labor migration, it, um, its system is based on the 1973 stop on labor migration, and there have been over 32 exceptions to that stop since then. But that's um, it's that's a different basis for for business or or corporations to influence policy um, when there's no um, mechanism to recruit labor migrants through contracts or things like that. So I think it, it depends um, on the economic situation, uh, how much corporations will be able to influence migration. And I think their influence has a lot to do with um, labor migration and also maybe the issue of um, of recognizing credentials from foreign institutions or from foreign countries. I think their corporations really could impact, um, or their, their interests could impact um, migration policy. And the stronger they, these corporations or businesses involved in that kind of policy, I think the stronger influence they have. But of course, you know, there's, a, there's corporate responsibility and that there are corporations that are involved in all sorts of different types of policies, like um, even in integration in schools or, or other areas. So I don't want to just limit it to that corporations are interested in, in influencing uh, immigration policy uh, of labor migration, but I would say that's where they have the strongest lever, and especially in countries where that lever is, is available for them to, to push on or pull on that they, they would have more influence than in countries where they don't. Okay. Thank you, uh, Crystal. We have another question from Michael Wentworth, who works at the Ontario Ministry of Municipal Affairs here in Toronto. And his question is to you, Claudia, and asks you to describe um, the various departments at the city level that you were able to, to draw into your conversation. What was the scope and scale of your outreach to city departments? 
Claudia? Ah, okay, okay. Yes, this uh, depends on the city, of course. So we um, we managed in um, most of the cases to have either the mayor or um, a, a deputy mayor involved, and um, then it depends um, uh, what the city thinks are the main uh, fields uh, of of action um, for integration. So. Uh, for example, most of the cases, um, uh, the administra administration for social issues is involved, the administration for education is very often involved, but also we had, uh, for example, in uh, in the first city, Felbert, um, the economic uh, uh, part of the administration, culture, uh, of course, so we uh, we also ask, what do you think are the most important fields of action um, and fields um, of administration who should deal with the issue? Does this answer your question? Yes, yes it does. I, I think Michael um, uh, can certainly contact you later if he wants, but it's a pretty interesting uh, response um, because city government is so complex, and I, I liked what it you is. said earlier that planning for integration should be incorporated into all departments of city level administration but it's, yeah. it's it, you know in the articulation you have to work at it progressively we have yes. another question for you claudia okay. yes Please. from all the way from auckland new zealand okay hello to new zealand is this program evaluated as it goes along so that the evaluation can can be integrated into program improvements and development um, and yes, we we are on the way doing that. So um, we have uh, several steps. We work together with an academy in Munich um, to do that. We have several steps. Um, one step is that we ask the participants for a feedback, of course, with a feedback sheet. And second, we ask um, the the trainers for feedback. We we were training around 20 trainers, um, and the trainers have to meet uh, at least twice a year um, to uh, secure quality and to develop further the um, integration workshop. And for uh, each city, they have to give a very um, long feedback with an evaluation sheet. And um, then we have now... Um, or we are going to have a special um, evaluation in one Bundesland, in one federal uh, country, in one federal state. Um, and of course, we um, ask uh, what is the outcome of each city. Did they really uh, manage to adopt an integration concept by the council, or did they not? How long did it take, and so on. So at the end, there will be an evaluation when, um, after all the um, after all these steps. Thank you so much, Claudia. I, I am really sorry to Thank report you. to you that we have run out of time. There are more questions, uh, but we will post them and get to them in time. Thank you, everyone. Class. Thank you very much. Yeah, and a special thank you to Bertelsmann Stiftung in Godesburg, Claudia Walter, Ulrich Kober, and Crystal Morehouse, and of course Annette Seishi from Kirp in Germany, and a special thank you. thank you to our featured guest, Dr. Rita Susmuth. I'd like to thank the audience. Uh, I think we've had a great session. We've hit on some really interesting ideas and practices that we can take away and think about implementing in our own uh, context, and of course we have... Uh, we, we have Claudia to turn back to if we want to ask her uh, more questions about how we can take this idea from cities in Germany and bring it into cities in our own jurisdiction. Best wishes and thank you all from Cities of Migration. Auf Wiedersehen. Merci. Adieu. Salut. Tschüss and goodbye.